Personal Capital is a completely free budgeting app that is great for building your wealth. Today, I'm gonna to give you a tutorial showing you exactly how to use it. Hey there, I'm Brittany Flammer with videos here on my channel every week about budgeting and money saving tips for you and your family. I've been using Personal Capital now for a while, but I have created a brand new account to walk you through and show you how to use personal capital from scratch. For today's tutorial, I'm on the computer showing you how to use it. If you're interested in a tutorial for how to use the app on your phone, then stay tuned. In the next couple of days, I have a video coming all about that. I will have it playing. I will have a link to it in the description box below when that is done. Now let's start by linking accounts. To link bank accounts, you can click right over here, this icon that says link bank accounts, or over here on the left, you can click link account. If you do not see this, if it's like this, you can click that little arrow to pull that screen out. Either one of these, you go ahead, click link account, and if you do not see your bank or credit card or mortgage company or whatever accounts you want to link, you can just type it in here. Go ahead right here and link a credit card. Add new login and it is going to ask you for the login information for that credit card or that bank account, and you will just type in your regular login information. It will take just a second for it to link, and then if you have more you want to link, you can go ahead and click link, link another. So if you don't see your account here, you can type it in. So Vanguard right here, I just click on it, and I will type in the login information. Now that there are some accounts linked, let's take a look at the net worth section. Now, if you want to see your net worth, over here on this left-hand side is going to show you net worth. So with these accounts, currently I'm at 74,000. Um, and if you look, it has my cash and all of the bank accounts there, investments with those accounts, and then our credit right here. And if you want to add more accounts, you can click link here or click the plus sign here. If you don't wanna see this, you can click that little left arrow. But if we come to overview, then select net worth, it is going to show us our net worth. Now, I just added these accounts, so it's not gonna show you my net worth from the past, but, Right here, it's showing me at 90 days. If I click up here, I can do just this month, or I can do up to last, last year, I can toggle between these. So right now, today, it's showing me 74,565. But if I scroll along, it'll tell me what it was for every day. So since this is a new account, it's gonna be $0. But once you, add more accounts and once you've been using it, you can scroll and it'll show your net worth every single day. Now it's showing me my total for cash right over here. And if I scroll down, it shows me all the cash accounts. And now my total for investments right here. And if I scroll down, it shows me the investments. Same with the credit. If you want to see specific transactions for accounts, so here's my business checking, I'll click on it. And if I wanna edit the name, I can just click the little pencil icon right there and I can exclude it or I can rename it right here. I don't, I just call it my business checking right there, but I'm gonna click save. And so it's going to be just my business checking. I can also toggle between different accounts. So this will show just my cash, net worth from cash. And here's investments versus credit loans, mortgages, all those other things. Go ahead and see everything you can do with all of your transactions. To overview, click transactions. Now we can toggle between all types of transactions that automatically by default is going to show us all of our transactions, or we can look at just cash, just investments, credits, whatever. I'm gonna leave it by default on all. And once again, we can toggle here by default, it's 90 days. We can click there and we can filter it, or we can, type in custom dates right here in the calendar. I'm just gonna, let's do just this month. Now, if we want to edit some, let's say this Sam's Club transaction, it says general merchandise, but let's click on that. I am gonna leave it because it was from Sam's Club, but the category, I can change that, change that category. Their categories that they already have are alphabetical, and let's say I it was groceries I was buying. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'll just click on groceries. So it is going to change the category to groceries. Now, let's say this Sam's Club um, was some flooring that I purchased for a house update. So I'm gonna click on this category and there is home improvement. That could be the category. Or let's say I want to rename one, I could click manage categories and I can create a category. 
Now I want to call it house updates. And it has to be one of these. It either has to be an income expense or a transfer. Now this is an expense because I'm buying it. So I'm going to click done. So now that is a category. And um, if I want to filter, well, so I can search, let's say I want to look at all store, all purchases from Walmart. Um, I can type in Walmart and for the month, this month, it was this purchase. If I want to do the last 90 days, we'll switch that. So every transaction from Walmart will pop up. Or if I want to search by category, I can exit out of that search category and I can scroll through all the categories. So here's gas and fuel. So I can see all of my gas or fuel purchases. If I want to end that filter, I just come over here and click the X and it'll go back to showing me all of them. If you'd like to split a category, if you'd like to split a purchase, click on, let's click on this Sam's Club general merchandise one. Um, let's click split transaction. And some of it was groceries. So we'll find groceries in the category. And 50 of it was groceries. So the rest of it was house updates more flooring. It's telling me right down here how much we have left. So the rest of it was flooring. So $60.12. I click save. Then if we look, this Sam's Club purchase, it's showing me this much of it was house updates, this much was groceries. So I can then go filter by, uh, let's do groceries. H-I, I can find groceries right there filter by groceries, and it will show up under that, just the amount that was groceries. Now we can go ahead and take a look at cash flow. For cash flow, we'll come up to banking and select cash flow. Now this is automatically going to compare this month to last month. So the solid blue line is this month. The dotted blue line is last month. By default, this is showing all accounts, but you can select if you just wanna look at your checking account or just your credit card or whatever, you can just choose. So here, I'm just gonna look at our credit card and I'm gonna compare this month to last month. And you can scroll by the day and it'll show you how much you spent on each day so you can compare. You can also toggle the dates for this so I could look at last month, but I'm gonna stick it to this month. And same thing, you can filter by the accounts, by the categories, you can search for a transaction. It is by default showing you all of the cash flow if you just wanna look at income it's going to show us a chart, a solid green lines. So as of right now, we're at zero because we haven't received any payment this month, as opposed to last month, we were zero until this day. Um, let's look at last month. So it's comparing, they're the <laughs> same so far. Um, but let's look at expenses. So this it's comparing this month the solid orange line to last month. So you can see how much how much you spent this month compared to last month. It's going to give you a little pie chart, not pie chart, circle chart, whatever it is, um, by category. So this dark orange is other expenses. And then we go to general merchandise. And if I click on that, it's gonna pull up our other expenses. So this was a camp for my son. So now I'll go back to all expenses. So if I wanna look at online or groceries, I can click on there and I can see all of our transactions for groceries. If we haven't made any income, there is no chart over here, but you could do the same thing here. Let's look at last month to compare. <laughs> we only, oh, and we need to, I don't wanna do credit card here. You have to unselect. So let's look at all my cash, done. Now let's look at the budgeting section. To access the budget, we'll go over to banking, click budgeting. It is automatically going to come up with your monthly budget. So this is comparing this month, the orange outdoor circle is this current month, and the yellow inner circle is last month. So you're automatically comparing, and this little dot here shows the seventh, we are on the seventh day of the month. This number right in here, um, is showing how much has been spent of our budget. So currently our budget is 5,000 for the entire month. We've spent 4,821. Um, but we are under 3,400 from last month. So bar chart over here is showing how much was spent on specific days. So on May 2nd, I spent 1,800. 
May 3rd, May 4th, and this starts, this chart up here shows us the largest expense down to the smallest. See all the transactions here. If you want to edit your budget, you click on this. This line right here is showing your, your average monthly spending, um, but the budget, I am going to type in exactly how much income we're getting for our budget. If you want to see all of the transactions, so charitable giving, that was just one transaction. So let's go back to all spending. But let's take a look at groceries. That was two different transactions we've had so far this month. Um, if go back to all spending, if we want to see general merchandise, uh, we got stuff from Amazon, Sam's Club, Walmart. And we can go in and edit this. Say this was clothing. I can change this to find clothing. Done. So now it'll come out of that category. Let's go ahead and take a look at all of the things you can do with investments. To access investing, click on investing right up here and it'll start with our holdings and we can toggle between balances, performance, all of these, or we can toggle between them by selecting up here. So I'm going to compare the blue is you index. This is your investments compared to the orange is comparing it to the S&P 500. So we can track here to see how ours are doing compared to S&P, or you can click US stock, foreign stock to see the comparison there. If you scroll down, it shows you all of your different holdings, the shares and price, your current value. Um, you can choose which accounts you want to show in the charts. Let's go to balances, click on this, and it's going to show you basically just the balance in each account. And you can scroll through here, but since we just added them today, we only have it for one day. But you could scroll and show your balances for each day. There are a lot of options for you under the planning tab, whether you are planning just for savings or for retirement. Let's see what you can do there. So let's go up to planning, click retirement planner. And this is going to show us a lot of information. Um, I, right now I'm 37% of my progress for retirement. Um, I'm planning, I want $4,000 a month for retirement, but I'm only projected based on what I have, I'm only projected to have 2916 So I got to make a difference. So let's edit my retirement. Let's say I want to retire. It's saying 60. Let me change it to 65 and I'll keep 4,000 spending decrease, 1%. Per, okay, we'll click save, and that's going to adjust things. This is where I am now. This is my anticipated retirement. This is when I will get start getting social security. This is when I'll run out of money. It's that what I have saved will meet my goals. I'm still a little bit short, so it's showing me I need to save a little bit more. So edit assumptions. I can change the tax rate or the inflation rate. I could lower it or raise it or my life expectancy, and that will tweak it. Head back up to planning and savings planner. So this is showing that I've saved 450 in taxable, tax-free, I've saved 26,000. This is what it's telling me I need to save every year, somewhere in that range. I'm planning on saving 18,000 a year, but I can edit that right here and change how much I want to save. And this is just going to show me like the balances, how much I've added this year and what my balances are. I can click on my emergency fund and this green is what is recommended for our emergency fund. So this is saying I have 4,000. I want to save this much. So it's, and this is, is my actual budget for the month. So this is where I'm at. So I need to go a long ways to reach my goal. Let's go to retirement fee analyzer. This will look at what our investments are and I'm losing a lot of money based on fees. So this, my annual fees are 0.88% of the investment accounts I've linked. Um, good benchmark is 0.5%, so I am adding three years on to retirement because of lost fees. So this is showing me what my fees are and how much, based on how much I have invested, how much I'm paying in fees per year. There are several things you can do in the wealth management section. Or I can also come over to wealth management, click schedule a call, and do the same thing. I can, I'm mountain standard time, I can pick a time, or if those dates don't work, I can click see more times to see when they have available. Say this day, and I can schedule a call at that time, and type in any info that I want 
and it will confirm an appointment. If this appears on your screen, click get $20, then you can invite your friends and you each get a $20 Amazon gift card after they've created a new account and linked at least $1,000 worth of investments. So you just type in their email address or you can copy the link and send it to them however you want, share it wherever you want. They'll get an email invitation if they sign up with your link and link at least $1,000 worth of investments to their personal capital account, then you'll each get $20. Personal capital is a powerful wealth building tool with some budgeting options. If you're not sure if it is the right option for you, check out my video right up here on the best five budgeting apps or my video here where I compare personal capital to Mint, which are the most common and well-known free budgeting apps. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.